if you strike at, imprison or kill us, out of our prisons or graves, we will still evoke a spirit that will thwart you and perhaps raise a force that will destroy you. We defy you. Do your worst. Our Sacanula at James Connolly Centre began as an idea that uh, a few of us had over 12, 13 years ago. A small number of local historians, trade union activists, Republicans came together and decided that, that uh, we would try and mark and commemorate the role that James Connolly played in Belfast. And of course, just a hundred yards from RS Cunula, Connolly lived on the front of the Falls Road at Glenina Terrace between 1911 and his untimely execution in 1916. Um, and the first thing we did was we organised an annual commemoration. And then we set ourselves to the task of erecting a full life-size monument to Connolly on the front of the Falls Road. But also we had this idea, what about a, what about a visitor centre? What about a museum? Here was a man who was one of the most important historical figures in the entire history of this island. Uh, one of the most important figures in the history of, of organised labour on this island. And he lived on the Falls Road with his family. A revolution will only be achieved when the ordinary people of the world, us, the working class, get up off our knees and take back what is rightfully ours. Many, many years later, um, I, I found myself as a Sinn Féin councillor on Belfast City Council. And we were able, through the Sinn Féin team on Belfast City Council, to apply for funding from the council. But also through the assistance of Jerry Adams and Sinn Féin, Reid O'Hara and others, we were able to make contact with the American trade union movement, uh, principally through Terry O'Sullivan, the head of LUNA, one of the biggest uh, labour trade union organisations in the States. And they also contributed a significant amount of money towards the, the, uh, towards the development of the project. Without them, without their support, without their hard-earned dollars uh, contributing to the project, it would have been possible to, to deliver. But here we are, we, we launched uh, the building, we opened the building on the uh, Good Friday, uh, the 19th of April this year. And we had a very significant delegation of, of, of North American trade union communists come over from the States and from Canada to, uh, to be here for the opening. Um, and uh, we had a fantastic parade and pageant on the Falls Road. We had uh, many, many unions from across the country and indeed from across the globe attended. The cause of labour is the cause of Ireland. The cause of Ireland is the cause of labour. It's a world-class facility. Um, we have our exhibition on the ground floor and uh, a wonderful cafe. Uh, when you come up onto the first floor, we have our James Connolly Library. Because what we want the place to be as well is not just a visitor centre, but an ideas institute, a workers' college, um, a university revolution, if, if, if you like. We're really proud of it. It's a, it's a first-class facility. And uh, we, we set ourselves the task in our mission statement to do a simple thing, I suppose, and that was to inspire a new generation to know Connolly, to understand his political ideas, and uh, spread the word. The worker is the slave in capitalist society. Woman is the slave of that slave. In 1911, Connolly was sent to Belfast by the Ice Transport and General Workers Union to organise Belfast workers, Protestants and Catholics, um, into the Union. Uh, he and his comrade Winifred Carney had two groups of, of workers specifically in Maine when they came to Belfast. One was the people who worked in the linen mills. At that time, the single biggest industry in Belfast wasn't shipbuilding, but was actually linen production. Around 30 odd thousand people worked in uh, dozens of mills across the city. 
And the vast majority were women and children. Um, it wasn't men who were employed. It was mostly women. And Connolly and Carney set about organising, bringing those women into the trade union. Um, Connolly famously referred to the linen workers of Belfast as the uh, linen slaves, the middle slaves, because of the really horrendous working conditions. Not only did they work incredibly long hours, uh, six days a week, but the conditions in which they worked, uh, the machines in which they worked on, the chemicals in which they worked, it was a very dangerous uh, place to work as well. It was a place where disease was, was rife and rampant, early death, um, uh, high mortality rates, um, uh, injuries, people losing limbs, children losing limbs, etc. Um, and so Colony and Carney set about organising very successfully uh, those women into the into the union. The other category was uh, were the ship workers, particularly the dockers. And there's a, a distinction to be made between the skilled ship workers and back then, but even before partition, uh, the skilled trades were largely, almost exclusively, uh, retained for loyal Protestants um, and um, most Catholic nationalists um, could only find work as unskilled dockers in, uh, in, in that part of the shipyard. So they set about organising the dockers into the, uh, into the Union. The betrayal of the national democracy of industrial Ulster would mean a carnival of reaction, both north and south would set back the wheels of progress, would destroy the oncoming unity of the Irish labour movement and paralyse all advanced movements while it lasted. But this has been a journey of discovery for all of us in terms of just the, the contribution that this man, that this individual made to not just the history of Ireland, um, not just to the, the rise of labour here in our own country, but across Britain and in the States. Um, uh, Connolly was one of the founding fathers of modern trade unionism in the world today. He was instrumental in setting up uh, what became known as the Wobblies, or the International Workers of the World, which was the first big cross-ethnic, cross-class, cross-skill union in the States. And Connolly was one of the key founding fathers of that union and one of the first organizers of that union. And that's how we discovered that Connolly could speak German or he could speak Italian, that he could translate Italian into, into English. Uh, because when he was in, living in New York, uh, two of the ethnic groups that he began to organize into the, the, the Wobblies um, was the Italian community, the German community, of course, the Irish community as well. New York would have been, as we all know, uh, a huge melting pot of ethnicities. But Connolly uh, saw the critical importance of breaking down those ethnic divisions in New York at the time and uniting colour, class, creed, ethnicity in one big union. Without the power of the industrial union behind it, Democracy can only enter the state as the victim enters the gullet of the serpent. Some of, of my comrades who were involved in the project travelled over to the states and they met with uh, some of the leaders of the American trade union movement. John Samuelson from the TWU in New York, uh, Tyra Sullivan from Leuna, based in Washington, um, and a whole range of other, uh, Robbie Hunter from California, former man from the New Dodge Road, who's a, a leading trade union organiser on the west coast of the, of the States. And uh, it was incredible, the boys, as they walked into their offices and the portraits of James Connolly up on the wall, the busts of James Connolly. So it's incredible when, you, when, you, when, when we met these guys, we met these men and women involved in, in, uh, in the trade unions in America and, and Canada as well, how, uh, how attached they are to Connolly 
are conscious they are of his legacy and the contribution he made. The British government has no right in Ireland, never had any right in Ireland, and never can have any right in Ireland. James Conley was a hero and a patriot whose life and legacy is a daily reminder to me that we would not be where we are today without the enormous sacrifices that he and others who came before us made on behalf of Ireland and working people. Conley faced strife and struggle in both Ireland and the United States in order to advance the cause of both working people and a free and united Ireland. And the best way to honor and remember him is to continue his work. I'm constantly awed and inspired by Conley's lifelong devotion to the cause, the purpose, and the mission of Irish republicanism and trade unionism. I've always taken to heart his immortal declaration that the cause of labor is the cause of Ireland, and the cause of Ireland is the cause of labor. To me, that's always meant that you can't have one without the other. You can't separate justice for Ireland from justice for workers. Even if Irish workers have a voice at work, they can never be free as long as they are subject to the whims of a government across the sea. And even if all of Ireland were to gain its independence, Ireland can never be liberated as long as workers are exploited. For many of us, our work as trade unionists and our work on behalf of a free and united Ireland are both motivated by the same thing, our deep belief in human rights, self-determination, and democracy. In many ways, he was one of the first truly international labor leaders. He spent nearly a decade organizing workers in the United States, and he helped form the international workers of the world. So at a time when so few people have a good understanding of labor history and labor unions, it made perfect sense to support the Conley Center and its mission to teach about James Conley, labor history, and the trade union movement. We also attended and took part in the dedication of the center because we wanted to emphasize the enduring connection between Ireland and her exiled children in the United States and Canada. The Irish played a major role in the history of Lyuna and other North American trade unions, and we remain very involved today. There's a photo downstairs of, of Mike Quill. Mike Quill was the founder of the Transport Workers Union in America, or one of the founders, the main founder, and he's actually an IRA man from Kerry. Um, and he came along with a, a lot of other folks um, in the diaspora of the, in the, the tragedy of the Irish Civil War. The New York City subway and bus system was unorganizable. It was unorganizable. It was craft union against craft union. The bosses were craftily pitting one against another, electricians against um, trolley car drivers, against track workers. And Mike Quill brought something very special with him, which was the industrial trade union philosophy of James Connolly. Um, our union was basically founded by the, the, the hard men and women that came in the aftermath of the Irish Civil War, and they were the only ones with the industrial trade union philosophy that Quill um, took from James Connolly. They were the only ones who were able to beat down the Pinkertons that were beating down transit workers in New York. And so, so there's a lot of synergy here. There's a lot of great history. This was a natural for us, and um, so we're gonna, we're, we, we, we continue to organize on that industrial trade union philosophy. Uh, we've expanded from the New York City subway and bus system. We now represent 30,000 American airline mechanics and baggage handlers, 30,000 workers at Southwest. We're in the airline industry, the railroad industry, but it all began with the philosophy of James Connolly being applied to organizing in the New York City subway system. No revolutionary movement is complete without its poetical expression. If such a movement has caught hold of the imagination of the masses, they will seek a vent in song for the aspirations, the fears, the hopes, the loves and the hatreds engendered by the struggle. Until the movement is marked by the joyous, defiant singing of revolutionary songs, it lacks one of the most distinctive marks of a popular revolutionary movement. It is 
the dogma of a few and not the faith of the multitude. Come all ya good workers, good news to you I'll tell Of how the good old union has come in here to dwell Which side are you on? Which side are you on? My daddy was a miner and I'm a miner's son And I stick with the union Will you be a man?